What's your story? What's your sign? It's like we're twin flames in a different life. Okay, hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. Um, I thought I would finally get around to the birth story of little Andy. Um, I thought at the end of my birth story and that six month update of Andy, excuse me, I might do sort of just like a quick overview of what my births were like for my other two kids, which is Abby and Aiden. Let's just get straight into it. Um, don't really know what I'm going to talk about. I haven't even written any notes. I've just started filming and I'm hoping I cover all the points I need to. But we'll get straight into my sort of pregnancy very briefly to then my actual labour. So my pregnancy was horrible. Um, <laughs> I don't do well when it comes to pregnancy. I get very sick. I am unable to get out of bed most days. I had a lot, a lot of heartburn with Andy and I drank a lot of milk and I just have this inkling where, cause she can't have dairy. And I'm thinking, is it because I drank so much milk when I was pregnant that now she can't handle it in her tummy? So yeah, a lot of heartburn. So I drank a lot of milk and I did have like tum tums, like the thing to help with digestion and stuff. But it didn't really help too much so I just feel like it's my fault that I had way too much milk um but yeah pregnancy does not agree with me um I never make my due date but they are never too early of a baby either thankfully they are at pretty much the perfect time so I went into labor pretty much five past four in the morning so 4 or 5 a.m and I woke up to my waters starting to break, so I have an amazing bed. So the first thing I could think of to do was quickly get my ass out of bed so it doesn't get on the sheets or go through to the mattress. So I slid out of bed and I was like, oh my god, I'm like, okay, it's happening. So I quickly woke Alex up because I thought things were going to just unravel so quickly. I'm scared we're not going to make it to the hospital. Um, and then, so Alex quickly got up. We did have our bags packed, but there was obviously like those nitty gritty things you need to quickly put in last second, which is the kids' iPads, chargers, phone, um, that sort of thing, etc. So I'm sort of just standing there in pain and getting really angry and telling him he needs to hurry up and trying to also at the same time remain calm because I have two kids and I didn't want them to freak out and get really scared because my daughter definitely would. She is very emotional. <laughs> my bad. Um, so yeah, so it all starts unraveling. Then we get in the car, we drive up the road cause we call my sister-in-law, let her know that she's going to meet us down the corner to give um, Abby and Aiden over to her in her car. And then she looked after the kids for, I think it was almost two days. Um, so she met us around the corner and she took the kids and off we went to the hospital. Um, we did make it. And then I think maybe 40 minutes of being there that she was born. Um, I had gas and air and I don't know if anyone's ever done this, but I sucked on the gas and air and it was so unbelievably strong. I just felt really out of it. And I was like, Whoa, I was like, you need to turn the gas down. Who tells someone to turn the gas down when they're in pain? Um, me, apparently. Um, so they turned it down and I was in the shower and I, I had her while I was leaning over an exercise ball um, while my husband sort of just kept the water going all over me. Um, it was very, very quick. Um, so she basically was born at 5.55 in the morning. So it was just under two hours from beginning to end. Um, very intense, very painful. And I was so tired because I didn't go to sleep until like 2 a.m. that night. Um, so I had maybe two hours sleep before I had to go into this very intense labor. So that was not, not ideal. Um, 
sorry if you do hear my dog howling in the back. He is howling with all the neighborhood dogs down the street. Yeah, we had her. Everything was all good. I made my way back to the bed. Um, you know, sort of just sort of gave her a first feed. She wasn't really latching properly in the beginning, but all was well in the end. However, just as we were about to get transferred into the ward to stay because they wanted me to stay just because they weren't too sure if baby had swallowed any poo or anything like that. So um, they're like, you know, just a precaution. We just kind of want you to um, just stay um, for a bit. And I was like, oh, okay, all right, um, I'll do that because I'm, you know, a bit worried this time round. I've never stayed in a hospital. I always leave after the six hours. They have to wait six hours after baby's born before they can allow you to leave if there's no complications. So I've never actually stayed overnight once I've had a baby. But I agreed to it because I just felt a bit uneasy about it. So I went to go get dressed and then I started hemorrhaging. At first, we sort of didn't realize, like, okay, you know, they were just massaging down my stomach to try and get it to contract again. Um, but lots and lots of blood just kept coming out. Um, then I started to panic because out of all things to happen, my biggest fear was to hemorrhage. So Alex took Andy and he was sitting on the couch basically in a full view of me. Um, which he's seen plenty of times anyway. Um, and he was just seeing everything unravel. And he said he was actually quite scared and worried. And thankfully, Andrew was very settled with him and in his arms. So I don't know how long that all happened. Um, but the gas and air stopped working because they were... I don't know, I got so many needles in my arms um, from them trying to give me things to stop the contractions to having to put me, I don't know, they had the, what are they called, is it cannula? I had like two cannulas, um, one, I don't remember what was in them, but I had two going, and one was to bring on contractions to try and clamp down my uterus, which didn't work, and we were starting to get to the point of scary, um, well, at least I was kind of freaking out, which probably did not help. Um, I just, that was just my biggest fear and I had a lot of anxiety. Um, but I was in a lot of pain because it was bringing on more contractions and then the gas and air wouldn't work to help take the edge off. And everyone was just like raveling around me. Doctors were coming in and out and it wasn't a fun experience. And it was like strange because straight after, it didn't happen straight after, it happened like we were calling people and letting know Andy was here, like all our family. And then, you know, everything was fine. We were in there for an hour or so. And then maybe it wasn't an hour. And we just, I went to get up to get dressed and it all just happened. So we ended up having to stay definitely overnight after that. And I had the what's it called? The thing that's basically, I can't remember what it's called. Cannula. That's another word where you got the bag attached. So like all your wee goes into it. Um, so that was very difficult. And then I, I don't know if it's too much TMI, but I just kept sort of bleeding out through the night as well. It was really scary. It was just a mess on the bed and um, it just was the most uncomfortable. We're almost there for 48 hours because they had to do all these extra checks because I am a negative blood type and um, they have to give me another anti-D needle because I think it's called anti-D. Andy was a, a positive and I am a, a negative. So when you're a negative blood type, you have to go through all these little extra precautions to make sure that your bloods don't mix. Um, and there was a lot of drama around that in my pregnancy as well. The first week of her being born was, we're like, oh my gosh, we have an angel baby. Like, she's brilliant. <laughs> then, it's funny seeing this video now, <laughs> I remember Hilary Duff saying, your baby has not yet realized they are out in the world. And that is so true. <laughs> 
Um, she was an angel baby for a week and then pretty much became the devil child after that. <laughs> uh, she uh, was basically having her witching hours where she would scream from pretty much 6 p.m. to like midnight and it was a very, very tough time. So on when it came by to weekends, hubby would try and let me sleep. But because she was breastfeeding, I obviously still had to wake up every time to feed her. I was trying to catch up and sleep the whole time. Uh, she was waking up like pretty much every hour. Um, some nights it would be three hours. I think I got a seven hour stretch once and a five hour stretch a couple of times. But most nights it was pretty much every two hours and three hours some nights uh it was crazy intense that she wouldn't sleep she was upset her stomach oh it's a washing machine her stomach was just very very upsetting her so i looked and i researched a lot of things and i cut a lot of dairy out of my diet and she was a lot better but there's dairy in a lot of things that we buy and it was getting very hard to maintain that diet because I basically ate nothing to do that because it's hard to change a diet when your whole family doesn't change their diet. So in the end we decided okay let's do formula. So we tried some lactose free formulas first um, because that technically still is dairy. Um, she reacted to that as well. So we end up having to go on soy and she has been a different baby ever since. She now sleeps, she only wakes up like twice a night pretty much for a feed. Um, but she does sort of wrestle through that time. But I will take that any day over what we have experienced. Wasn't uh, the best first few months and um, so she's almost six months so she's like five and a half just over five and a half months um and she is rolling over from her back to her stomach she is now rolling to her left and her right onto her stomach because she was only rolling one way at one time but she still cannot master rolling back to her back um so <laughs> we'll see she can do it like she can she's very much capable of it she's very like she's lifting herself up off the mat um, but she just can't figure it out. <laughs> um, she has tried some solids since she was four months old. I don't do it every single day. Um, I've noticed she sleeps better when I feed her solids. She isn't a big fan though. Um, so that's sort of been a little bit of a difficult journey as well. But I find if I put it in one of those little kid, basically you just mash up something and then you put it in this thing where they feed themselves like a little mesh bag or a silicon thing with like little holes in it. She prefers, she will eat it happily then. But if I try to feed it to her, she's not as happy. So that's been a little difficult. Our, our other challenge where she would, she was breastfeeding, but she would not take a bottle, even if I put my own breast milk in there. So that was the challenge getting her onto the bottle. And she also has a dummy now. Please do not listen to a midwife if you have just this instinct that you should give your baby a dummy or something like that because it just helps. They reckon it causes nipple confusion and maybe it does for some babies. So maybe it is true in some instances. But for me, I gave her a dummy at first and she was such a happy baby. And we, we just really wanted like a dummy baby, especially because my daughter, she sucks her thumb and she now has some like teeth issues, like gum issues. And we're like, okay, well let's get baby onto the dummy. And that way we can easily remove the dummy later. But I listened to the midwife who says it will cause nipple confusion and I didn't want to do that. Hence, then she would not take a bottle. She would not take a dummy. And it took time and a lot of pushing to get her to take the bottle and to get her to like the dummy. Loves the dummy now. Has is on completely formula now and a little bit of solids every now and then. Um, but... Yeah, just go with your gut because if I reckon if we did the dummy earlier, we probably would have had a lot, not a lot easier in terms of sleep, but it would definitely would have helped, especially during car rides and all that in the beginning. So yeah, just do your research and like some midwives actually recommend doing your dummy. So it's just depending on which midwife and doctor that you have. 
yeah, so that's pretty much the story of Andy. As for the story, just I'll do a quick overview of Abby and Aiden. So Abby was my first child and she, I went in, I woke up to a very, very strong contraction in bed and my water broke. And because I had no idea what I was doing, I called the midwife up because I had a beautiful midwife for both my first kids. And her name is Kylie and she is at the Ipswich Hospital I had her at. And anyway, she's like, because it's your first baby, like, you know, just go for a shower and then, you know, make your way down here. And we were, I think, a 35 minute trip from the hospital at that time. I was like, okay, all right. So I jumped in the shower. Hubby jumped in with me just so he had, a, like, he was refreshed and stuff as well. But the contractions, like, kept coming on and they were extremely painful. And he's like, is the baby coming? Like, my husband. <laughs> I was like, I don't know. Like, I've never done this before. I have no idea what I'm doing. So we started to sort of like, okay. Mm. I was like, babe, like, this is, like, I... Could barely talk I was it was extremely painful the car right there was hard and we got there she took us to basically where all those other pregnant women were just to see if I was in labor first um they were gonna check me out <laughs> and I think because I was moaning like I was in labor they were like okay she is definitely in labor so they didn't even try and assess me they took me straight to the birth suite I yeah it was the most painful labor I've had out of those three was my very first labor. I was in the shower. You know how you go into that zone? They talk about that zone. I went in that zone with her and apparently I was in the shower for two hours. I felt like I was in there for five minutes. <laughs> um, so that's really strange to be told that. I felt with my daughter, like my first daughter, Abby, her labor was like it's like I didn't get a break from contractions. It felt like it was a consistent labor and it was extremely painful. So her labor was only six hours from start to finish. And um, it, pushing your first baby out, I think like the pushing out part was so hard to, to do because you have to cause yourself pain to you know ha have baby to push her out and you would be causing like that pain because you are stretching yourself um I think I was lucky enough to I think I got one stitch with my son but I didn't have stitches with any of the other two so yeah that was a six hour labor and she was actually an easy baby um like we we're a bit worried at first because she kept vomiting when she was on her back so we put her on an incline um but my husband still calls her the perfect child because she was an easy baby and she slept through the night from like eight weeks old and she was just straightforward, like no issues, just easy. My son was a three hour labor from beginning to end. And with his labor, I ate like a curry the night before and then I went into labor at 3 a.m., had him at 6 a.m., and yeah, same, like his labor was really easy. Um, it was painful, but I managed, like it was like, I could talk through like between contractions. Like I haven't really been able to talk with the other two during their labor, but I was talking between contractions with him. I was standing up on the bed, just like wobbling, like side to side, like leaning over the bed. I also had him in the shower as well. Um, my daughter, I did actually have my first daughter, Abby, I had on the bed because I begged for the epidural for her, but I only had gas in here, gas and air for her as well. Um, by the time they came to give me the epidural, it was too late anyway. So I was already on the bed and whatnot. So, um, back to my son, cause I missed that. Um, uh, my son, three hour labor, I could talk through contractions and at one point we called Alex's mum to come and grab Abby. Um, um, she stayed for like two days at her nan's house um, just so we could get settled with new bubs and, you know, sort of just have that time. Um, but anyway, while he was out 
with his mum while I was up in the labour ward. Um, he just had to basically put our car seat into his mum's car, like mum's car, so that she was safely in her car. The midwife got a bit concerned thinking like he was just like the worst dad in the world because he wasn't there supporting me during labour. Um, but he was taking care of our daughter and I was fine. Like I honestly was fine through this labour. And they're like, you know, do you need me to go get him for you? And I was like, no. I was like, he's taking care of our daughter. Like, it's fine. Um, and he didn't take too much longer to come back up anyway. So, yeah, he's the most amazing partner and supportive partner. Um, I don't, just the assumption, just because he wasn't there in that moment while I was in labor, he was taking care of my daughter. Anyway. So he came up and yeah, so I was talking through contractions and then I ended up going in the shower and I had him in the shower and I cried a little, like I, my husband actually got really emotional with our first Abby. And then I cried a little bit with our son as well, because we were sort of confused if he was actually a girl or if he was a boy, because when we first found out, um, they told us girl originally and then sort of towards the end of the ultrasound, she's like, oh, she goes, no, he, it's a boy. And I was like, um, wait, is it a girl? Is it a boy? Like, are you sure? <laughs> and she goes, no, 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 it's definitely a boy. But then I started like the whole time because we didn't check again the whole time through that pregnancy. I was like, oh, like I had a boy baby shower. Hopefully it's a boy. <laughs> and he was a boy. <laughs> come out he was a boy and I was like relieved and excited at the same time doesn't matter if he was going to be a girl either way um his his or her name would have been Aiden just spelt differently um it's just you, you know you you, you kind of want the pigeon pair you want to experience what it's like to have a girl you want to experience what it's like to have a boy and we got the pigeon pair and it was great so he was born we went home um we didn't really have any issues at first but then he did have a lot of reflux and he had a lot of colic and he needed to be held quite a lot um so that was quite a lot of issues and he would not take the bottle until he was eight months old so i breastfed for eight months but he also slept through the night from like eight weeks old so he was a good baby i mean he felt difficult at first um but when we reflect back on it now we're like okay he really wasn't that hard compared to andy <laughs> Oh my god. Um, so Andy still doesn't sleep through the night and she's nearly six months old. So I'm like, what am I doing wrong this time? Like, what am I doing different? Um, but you know, some babies just like that. I feel like the first two kids that I had were quite easy and I really didn't get to know a lot of the challenges that a lot of parents face when it comes to you know, lack of sleep and just all these little problems and issues that arise. So Andy has been what I like to call my karma child. And she has been a whole new ball game. And I can now understand and experience <laughs> the other side of having a child. And there is a lot of things and a lot of challenges with Andy. Um, you can't put her down for too long and you know she does have a lot of reflux and she has a lot of colic and uh she yeah, she can't have dairy at the moment i'm hoping that that will sort of out be outgrown but yeah so that's basically the birth stories i hope that wasn't too confusing and i hope i didn't sort of get too much off track there in terms of having three kids and my daughter is eight at the moment. My son is six and Andy is obviously five and a half months. There isn't like these two are very close in age. Abby and Aiden and Andy is obviously there's a bigger age gap, but I wouldn't change it for the world. Um, we planned all three pregnancies. They were all planned. Um, it doesn't matter if you don't plan it. That's just life telling you you're meant to have a child. Um, but all three of them were planned and I do wish that we did have Andy earlier because I, I don't like that the age gap is so big. But at the same time, there is a lot of positives in regards to having that age gap because the kids, the other two can sort of like take care of themselves a lot more and understand what's happening 
So that's been very great. Like I make sure they don't change a nappy or, you know, have to do anything for their sister. No, no, I'm, I'm the mum and I will do that. But like they like grabbing her nappies for me. They like getting the wipes when I need them. They love playing with her and they love showing her off. They are so smitten and she is very smitten with them, especially her brother. <laughs> for some reason, whenever he's in the room, she just stares at him and just laughs. Like he can just look at her, smile, and she will laugh at him. She, he can get her to laugh like no tomorrow. But I love having three kids and I love being a mum of three. We would have one more if we were rich, but we're not. Um, and I also don't want to go through pregnancy again because it doesn't agree with my body and I am about to go on my weight loss journey again to go back to when I was smaller. I might even insert a picture or two about how like I was a lot smaller just before this pregnancy. But when I get pregnant, I gain a weight and it is much harder this time to lose weight. So yeah, I, yeah. Love being a mum of three and those are my labour stories. So Abby, six hour labour, Aiden, three hour labour and Andy was just under two hours. So if I had another one, I don't know if I'd make it to the hospital. <laughs> um, yeah, so I hope you enjoyed listening to my birth story about Andy and just a little bit about her. And I hope that you liked listening about the other two as well. Like, that's, this is, yeah, those are my birth stories. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed listening to my birth stories and thank you so much for watching. Please like, please subscribe to this channel. It would help us a lot. I love creating these memories and I actually really love doing this and it would be great to eventually do this as my job. So get to that like, get to that subscribe and I will see you in the next video.